of every living body is something like the flame of a candle. This living thing that you're feeling, like the gyroscope top, it's your own life. Because you can see very simply that you would not understand the experience that you call voluntary action and decision, being in control and being in yourself, unless in opposition to that there was something else. You couldn't realize self and control and will unless there was something other, out of control and instead of will, won't. It's hard to believe when people are living unwanted things, it's hard to believe that they are, have been given free will and that their choices are being honored because it's hard to believe that someone would choose something unspeakable or unthinkable or horrific or horrendous. It's hard to believe that. People don't realize that they're making those choices, so it feels like it's something that's being done to them. And the reason that they don't believe that they're making those choices is because not one of you, or it would be a rare few of you, would acknowledge that I would do or anyone would do these unspeakable things to myself. So it makes you believe that there must be some other factor involved. There must be some source of darkness. There must be some source of badness. There must be some cosmic debt to pay. You come up with all kinds of things in your explanation of the unwanted things. Knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. Being able to answer this question, who am I and what do I want? Who am I really? My answer is I am God's child. I am that which is born of all that is. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. Come trailing the breath of the ancestors yet, but trailing the breath of the angels and understanding that because I am connected to the source of all that is, all that is possible is possible for me. That's who I am. And that each and every one of us, when we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity, closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. Having an open mind, it means opening yourself up to the potentiality and the possibility that anything and everything is possible. So having a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing really means finding within ourselves the ability to get rid of a trait that I find so common in contemporary, in the contemporary world. And what do I want? I don't want to just be successful in the world. I don't want to just make a mark or have a legacy. The answer to that question for me is I want to fulfill the highest, truest expression of myself as a human being. I want to fulfill the promise that the Creator dreamed when He dreamed the cells that made up me. What do I want? You must have some kind of vision for your life. Even if you don't know the plan, you have to have a direction in which you choose to go. What I've learned is that's a great metaphor for life. You want to be in the driver's seat of your own life because if you're not, life will drive you. You see, you're never going to get enough. You already are everything. You're everything that you need. Think of it for just a moment. Everything that you need to have total bliss, perfection of your life, you already are. You already have it. You came into this world with nothing. That's how you're going out. 
And the time that you have here, it, what you have is your uniqueness, your specialness, and you don't need anything else. Now think on this. If you don't know how to appreciate what you have and where you are in your life, you don't need anything else. Because if you do get something else, you won't know how to appreciate that either. You'll just want more. Or you'll want it to be different. Or you'll want it to be the way it used to be. Or you'll want someone else to be the way you think they should be. Successful people or no limit people or self-actualizing people or inner directed people, however you, whatever labels that have been put on them by great thinkers and philosophers and therapists and people uh, that have uh, looked at human beings, these kinds of people are people who always have enough. There are some people who can handle anything, not because their circumstances are different. You see, your circumstances have very little to do with your fulfillment in life, very little. It's, it's how you're approaching your circumstances. It's your attitude towards your circumstances that make all the difference in the world. And taking what you are and accepting it. No limit people are human beings who take what they are and accept it. And don't tell themselves that somehow they're deficient because of anything about themselves. This is a very crucial uh, concept for for me and for virtually all of us it's this idea of taking your life in your own hands and being the kind of person that you choose to be and understanding that everything that comes your way is an opportunity is a blessing and it wasn't until I learned how to celebrate virtually everything that came my way that I was able to transcend it. You see, everything that was given to us by God, whatever that is, is perfect. No one can deny the mountains are perfect and the rivers are perfect and the birds are perfect and the hippopotamuses are perfect and, and, and so on. This is just what was given to us. Everything else that you have on our planet, that we have on our planet, comes about as a result of thinking, thinking, thought makes it so. You see, everything on our planet that is alive can never die. It can never die. Life doesn't die. It just transforms. It just moves on to new places and new ways of being, new ways of being. And the way of being that is the most transcendent of all is this way that comes from seeing yourself as love and only having that to give away. Only having that to give away. Let's say I were to stand up here in front of you and just visualize for a moment that I have an orange. And I take this orange and I squeeze it as hard as I can squeeze it, okay? What's going to come out? Juice. What kind of juice? Orange juice. Apple juice, any chance? <laughs> Once in a while? Come on, now and then. A little mango juice come out of an orange once in a while? No mistakes, right? Never, no matter what. Next question. Everybody passes. These are easy, okay? Why? When you squeeze an orange, as hard as you can squeeze it, does orange juice come out? Because that's, not because it's an orange, because that's what's inside, isn't it? On our planet, when you squeeze something, what comes out of it is what's inside. Not too difficult, all right? Does it matter if your mother squeezes the orange? Does it matter what instrument she uses? Does it matter if you just had your period and then you squeeze an orange? <laughs> Does it matter if your boss squeezes it? How about if your kids do it? Your kids squeeze an orange. Does it matter? Does it matter what time of day? Suppose they do it at noon, all right? How about at four in the morning? Does that matter? Whenever you squeeze an orange, the only thing you get out is what's inside, right? No arguments. Same thing works for you. Same principle works for you. It's a principle of the universe, all right? Someone squeezes you. That is, someone puts pressure on you. Someone says things about you that you don't like. Someone puts 
uh, tension on you, whatever. Your boss says something to you that you don't like. And out of you comes anger. And out of you comes hatred. And out of you comes fear. Or out of you comes stress. Or out of you comes tension. Why? Is it because of your boss and the way they squeeze you? Never. Is it because of your mother? I mean, she really can be a pain sometimes, right? Is it because of your children? No. What comes out of you always when someone squeezes you is what's inside. This is the, the vital principle of being a no-limit person. It's so crucial to get this and understand that. That if you have any hatred in your heart for anyone in this world or any anger or any fear or any of those things, it has nothing to do with the rest of the world. It only has to do with what you put inside. Now, how does what gets inside of you get there? That's the key. How does it get there? As you think. Only as you think. You see, there's no anger in the world. There's no stress in the world. There's no tension. It's perfect. We've already established. It's perfect place. It works just fine. It's all flowing the way it's supposed to flow. The evidence for it is, it is. <laughs> That's all the evidence you need. Just look around you. Everything out there is a miracle. Everything, including you. There are no mistakes. It's all perfect. And everything that happens to you in your life, whether it's a trauma, whether it's a disease, whether it's somebody treating you in a certain way, there's a lesson in all of it. No limit people understand the lesson in life and therefore celebrate the lessons.